This video shows the initial setup and calibration of the Ion Science Tiger Select Benzene Monitor. Your new Tiger Select case contains the following items. Here we have the manual, the accessories kit, the instrument charger, and the power adapter for the charger. Then we have the instrument itself, the extended probe, which is also a tube holder, the tubes, pre-filter tubes, pack of 10, some extension hosing, the USB adapter to the computer, the memory stick which contains the instrument software, and a tube tip breaker which is used to open the tubes by scoring them first, by rotating, and then snapping off to break them off. The accessories kit consists of the following items, a lanyard that can be connected to the instrument and this loop right here, a lamp cleaning kit consisting of three cotton swabs and aluminum oxide polishing material, a carbon filter, a sensor removing tool, a set of spare sensor filters, and a sensor adapter seal. It also contains a calibration adapter that allows excess gas flow to escape when connected to fixed flow regulators and hooked up as such. The carbon filter is usually attached to the inlet of the instrument to clean the ambient air during zero calibration, or it may be attached to the effluent hose barb to absorb vapors such as benzene during calibration so that they do not escape into the air that you are breathing. To connect the carbon filter to the effluent, use a special hose barb which is not included in the accessory kit but needs to be ordered separately. Screw it into the effluent on the back of the instrument and attach the carbon filter through a connecting tubing. Before you begin, charge the unit for at least 7 hours by placing it on the charging cradle, connect it to the AC adapter and plug it into the wall. To ensure proper charging, make sure that the nub on the charging cradle is aligned with the slot on the back of the instrument. With the unit removed, the charging cradle shows it is ready when the light is red. When the instrument is placed on the cradle, it will turn orange for charging and green when the charging is complete. To turn on the unit, push the enter key. It takes about 30 seconds for the instrument to warm up the lamp and go through the startup diagnostics. The display screen will show a PPM reading when it is ready to measure. The unit comes calibrated to isobutylene with alarm limits of 50 and 100 PPM. To turn off the unit, hold down the enter key. The active display shows several features. The extent of the battery charge, the amount of memory left, the status of the backlight, and the level of the sound alarms or beeps when you press the keys. Over here are the soft key indicators which correspond to the keypads A and B soft keys. For example, the tools key is entered by pushing the B button. Here we have several options of items to change. The backlight, the sound levels, initiating a calibration, the alarm limits, whether the unit is in PPM or milligrams per liter mode, and the status of the lamp. To move between the selected items, press the up or down keys. For example, to enter the backlight mode, press the enter key. Now we have a choice, backlight off all the time, backlight on all the time, backlight on when the unit is moved into the dark and backlight timed. Notice that escape saves the changes made and does not ignore them. So if you want the backlight latched, highlight that item, press escape to return to the previous menu and save the changes. 
the I or information soft key gives information on the status of the unit. Press the A button to enter this mode. It says the unit is calibrated to isobutylene with a response factor of 1.0, high alarm 100 ppm, low alarm at 50 ppm. Scroll down. Lamp is 10.0 EV. Last calibration date was 2012 and various other factors. Again, hit escape to return to the main menu. To select other soft keys, use the up and down arrows. The most important soft key menu for the Tiger Select is the TAC or Total Aromatic Hydrocarbons and Benzene mode. Use the down arrows to locate this menu. Here's the TAC mode, TAC mode, and this is a benzene mode. To initiate the TAC, enter the B key. Question mark is asked. Hit enter. The check appears and escape to revert to TAC mode. The response factor of 0.5 is initiated. And the unit reads in sub PPM levels down to 1 ppb resolution. In TAC mode, the unit uses a response factor of 0.5, which is close to that of similar aromatics like benzene, toluene, and xylene. Return to the benzene mode. If a benzene measurement is desired, use the ASOF key. The unit tells you to insert a tube, indicating it's ready for benzene measurements. To make benzene measurements and calibrations, remove the standard probe, open a tube, First score it, twist it off to break, score the other end, twist it off to break, and then insert it into the tube holder probe with the arrow pointing towards the instrument. Push it in and screw it on place. Use a new tube for each calibration and measurement. However, it is not necessary to use a new tube for the zeroing because the zero occurs during the initial portion of the calibration with standard 5 ppm benzene gas. The Tiger Select is calibrated in benzene mode using 5 ppm benzene, most commonly supplied from a fixed flow regulator connected to the instrument as shown. The instrument pump draws 0.25 liters per minute and therefore a fixed flow regulator with a slight excess flow in the range of 0.3 to 0.5 liters per minute is recommended. However, because the best calibration is done as close as possible to atmospheric pressure, it is important not to force the gas through the tube and the instrument. This is accomplished in one example by using an open tube as such with an opening slightly wider than the probe diameter. Or you can simply remove the grub screw at the end of the probe, which allows excess flow to flow out of the hole created, and then connect the gas directly. Some people prefer to avoid the extra gas usage by employing a demand flow regulator, or by connecting a peddler bag filled with the sample gas. In either case, Make sure that the grub screw is still in place to form a tight gas path without any leaks. Although demand flow regulators work reasonably well and are more economical by saving some gas, they do cause a slight negative pressure in the gas flow system and thus slightly reduce the quality of the calibration. Therefore, a fixed flow regulator with slight excess flow is recommended. Note that the grub screw is not readily accessible when the probe is detached from the instrument. To get to the grub screw, insert a tube and push up the spring-loaded probe end to gain access to the screw for removal. To calibrate on benzene, first select the Tools Mode soft key, scroll over to the Calibration menu screen, hit Enter, select the tube for benzene, hit Enter again. The unit asks you to insert a tube, but first, select the temperature because this affects the calibration time. Use this soft key to in increase the temperature or decrease as needed to the ambient temperature. 
Next, open the tube on both ends by scoring and snapping off the tip. And insert the tube with the arrow pointing towards the instrument and screw the assembly into the instrument. Next, connect the gas. Use a short piece of rubber or tie-gun tubing as longer pieces may absorb some benzene and cause some loss, unless you are using Teflon tubing for connections. To initiate the calibration, turn on the gas flow and press the Enter key. The calibration screen will appear and press the Enter key again to begin the calibration. The calibration time is denoted right here, depending on the temperature that was pre-selected. Zero occurs during the first few seconds of the calibration, and therefore it is not necessary to perform a separate zero. At the end of the calibration, a check mark appears to indicate that it is complete, and the concentration bump check reading is displayed here. To accept the calibration, push the Enter key. Escape the menu to observe the reading. To perform a benzene measurement, scroll up to the benzene tube key, push the button. The benzene tube display occur, adjust the temperature as needed, up or down. Insert the tube and push the enter key. The benzene reading is displayed, the timer counts down. And we can now see the benzene concentrations increasing as gas is applied and the gas passes through the tube. At the end of the timing, the concentration is displayed and the unit asks whether you would like to enter the STEL mode by entering this plus key. If so, push the enter key. The benzene STEL reading is initiated. The STEL reading is shown continuously and at the end of the 15 minute period, the STEL reading is displayed. To replace the Teflon filter, remove the nozzle cap, remove the O-ring, remove the filter, the old filter, place in a new filter, replace the O-ring, and screw the nozzle cap back on. To access the PID sensor for cleaning or replacement, open the back of the instrument with a flathead screwdriver. The sensor seal is located right here. This is the PID sensor. It can be removed by hand or with the tool. The sensor removal tool is used to gain access to the lamp by inserting it into the slots on either side of this PID sensor as such. The little pellet pops out and here's the lamp that can be removed to be cleaned. Do this all on a clean surface. To clean the lamp, take up a bit of aluminum oxide with the cotton swab. Rub the surface of the lamp crystal for about 15 seconds until a squeaking sound is heard. Use an air gun to blow the excess off. <laughs> Reinsert it into the sensor housing. Reattach the pellet. Reinsert it into the instrument and recalibrate the unit. When closing, make sure that the sensor seal is aligned with the sensor and the two holes for the flow are aligned with the two pipes here on this side. And the arrow is pointing towards the up position. It should snap into place when it is in the correct position.